let us start with the introduction of the book, book entitled The Text the introduces two of the computer. basic themes of the world. What qualities are desirable in a human being and how morality can be reflected in one's behavior. Different translations offer various interpretations of some of the language from the text. But virtue is recurring quality that is revisited many times. Some translations may introduce the term Trinze or Juzi, translating as prince or gentleman, respectively. In either case, the terms refer to a person with superior moral character, not necessarily a person of nobility. Some translations present this word as a scholar. Contrast this chapter with chapter 7 of book 1. Tresha states that the cultivation of one's character is not solely achieved through academic study but through one's relationships with others. In his esteem, a person may not be academically inclined but he would still consider them learned. Chapter 7 seems to gently correct aspects, chapter 6, while echoing much of its content. Ultimately, the impression given is that the content of one's character is a better measurement of a person than his or her status or intellectual acumen. Book 2 turns its attention to matters of government. Chapters 1, 2, and 3 deal with the government issues and the importance of te or character. Confucius compares the moral leader to one whose character is like the North Star. Even as the ethical beliefs of those around such a person may shift, one possessing true character remains steadfast. Likewise, the text stresses that the absence of evil or swerving thoughts is paramount in maintaining such character. Chapter 3 echoes Chapter 1 in stating that a moral leader does not use punishment to rule but relies again on the strength of moral character. Simply, cruel through force or fear will breed resentment, while governance through character will lead by example. These same ideas are echoed in chapters 19 and 20. The chapter 6, 7, and 8 return to the topic of filial piety. These chapters also serve to illustrate the rationality involved in matters of deference to one's parents or ancestors. This seems to be an effort to differentiate between a blind acceptance of a set of rules and the true understanding of the logic or even necessity of such cultural customs. Chapter 1 of Book 3 concerns the Chi family, which had usurped most of the powers of the Duke of Lu. Eight teams of dancers were the most allowable to high-level aristocrats or possibly the emperor himself. The Chi family's crime was in usurping rights allowed only by the members of higher families. This book of the text deals largely with matters of ritual and family, so this is a fitting start. In chapter 2, Confucius mentions the three families of Lu. This refers to the Chi, Mang, and Shu Sun. The Yu Song or Ode mentioned refers to the Book of Songs, whose use was originally only appropriate in the Emperor's court and not in the Duke's palace. Some historical context is also important here. In 771 BC, the Zhu dynasty lost most of its power to regional lords when the royal line was broken. As such, Zhu kings ruled largely in name only. The son of heaven in the text refers to the Zhu king. Book 4 concerns itself largely with the qualities of Jen 
and what can and cannot be considered gen. Thus, it also deals with the characteristics of a gentleman. Confucius lays out specific examples of what a gentleman should and should not do. This is a brief book when compared with some of the others in the text. It also touches briefly on the matters of filial piety, specifically relating the periods of mourning when one's parents have passed and how long a son should continue in the path of his father after his father's death. In Book 4, Chapters 3 and 4 are usually lumped together because of their seemingly contradictory nature. Confucius states that a good man knows both how to like someone and how to hate them. In chapter 4, he is then quoted as saying that a good man will, in fact, dislike no one. This seemingly discrepancy illustrates the editorial issues inherent in the text as a whole. In later books, in particular, you will see that translations proves quite difficult and varies greatly in its interpretation at times. In this particular case, chapter 4 can also be translated as only a good man is safe to like and safe to dislike, for if you like him, you will not take undue advantage of it, and if you dislike him, he will not resent it. This provides a more constructive picture when coupled with the first verse in chapter 3. Book 4 also speaks of Te, or moral force. In chapter 11, for example, Confucius states that the gentleman sets his heart upon moral force. Confucius prioritized marriage making as guided by character and not by fortune. So the master said that someone is worthy to be wived despite of the imperfections. The master said, if there were no virtuous men in Lu, then how he would have a superior virtue character. But he said that readiness of the tongue is no part of virtue. Confucius proposing to withdraw from the world, and if the doctrines will make no way, he will get upon the raft and set out of the sea accompanied by one of his disciples. The master reminded them that they are not equal to others. Absolutely not. He, together with the people of Lu and his disciples, share unbending and significant virtues and principles that are highly important to attain and practice. Above all, they are ready and determined to take the right direction, but it is undeniable that they still need Confucius to guide them. Confucius told them that one of his disciples have the capacity of ruling, facing the south. One of his disciples compared them with regards to their aptitude in the government, and the master replied that his words are right. The implication is that Zhong Gong Ran Yong, who was of humble origin, was nevertheless worthy to hold high office. Duke A asked Confucius, who among of his disciples loves learning? Then the master replied that he has. He explained his characteristics and compared the passion and love in learning he has among the others. Confucius talked about rewarding officers, which he pointed out that officers should help distress and not to add something for the wealth of the rich. The master told them how superior one of his disciples and the capabilities of others to assist in the government. The master also reminded them how learning should be pursued and the different stages of attainment. Then Confucius talked about the comparison between having the wisdom, 
which is definitely a good quality that people may admire, being a human, which is undeniably a higher standard, and human approach where someone will judge by what is close to ourselves. Confucius said that he is a transmitter and not the maker, that he believed he can compare himself with the old bang. He also mentioned that he can teach anyone who put interest and eagerness to learn without tiring. He told them that the virtue that is not sufficiently cultivated, learning that is not thoroughly digested, and not being able to do what you have learned are the things that make him anxious. The master required real desire and ability on his disciples and his readiness to impart knowledge. He also mentioned that he didn't open up to those people who are not determined to gain knowledge and those who are having difficulties in expressing themselves. Once is enough. If they will not learn from it, he will not repeat the lesson. He also explained his sympathy to those people who mourn and the things he was careful about, like preparations for sacrifices, warfare and illness, and the subjects that he didn't want to discuss, like strange occurrences, fits of strength, rebellion, and the gods. Confucius explained virtues and principles that the disciples should need to understand and to follow. Confucius explained what is the value of the rules of propriety and of example in those in high stations. He said, what are the things that should attain and not by someone? Because he believed that people are used to follow a path, yet they didn't understand what they are following. He also told the worthlessness of talent without virtue. Like if someone have talent, but if he is not a human, his talent will be set aside and will be not worthy at all. Confucius leaves advises that learning should be pursued as if the goal is never been achieved, and he then praised the characteristics of one of his disciples that he didn't found any flaws about him. Another the required qualifications of the officers that they should attain in the office are when a country is governed by its way, poverty and other related conditions are the things that bring shame. And if it's not, the wealth, prestige, and honor are the things to be ashamed of. Then he reminded them that man should mind his own business. Like if he doesn't hold any position in the office, then he shouldn't make any actions and he has nothing to do with the administration. The reminders and advices he shared contribute in having a great sense of responsibility and humaneness. Book 9 The Master seldom spoke about profit fate or humaneness. Confucius was known as a great man by a villager in Dashang, but is not making reputation for himself, so he chose charioteering to specialize than archery, and shared rituals which made differently from the past and present. The master observed four prohibitions, no willfulness, no obstinacy, no narrow-mindedness, no egotism. The people of Kuang mistook Confucius for Yan Hu, a military leader who had led a revolt in the religion, which Confucius' life was put in danger. The master has a close connection to the prime minister as he stated that he knows him well. 
The appearance of the phoenix in a mysterious chart put forth by the Yellow River were believed to be portents, signaling the presence of a sage in the world. Yan knew one author that the master helped him to widen his culture ideas, rituals, and leads others. The master talked about death as if he were a government official. As a private individual, though, he was not entitled to such retainers and better die in hands of his disciples than in a roadside. He even wished to live in non-Chinese people, to put music in order, the ya and song, which are sections of the Book of Odes. He never saw a person who loved virtue the way to love physical beauty. He even said to show respect that words may bring change, attention, or advice, but it is great to interpret it correctly. Be loyal and trustworthy. Make good friends and not be afraid to correct mistakes. Be a good follower and be with oneself. Take a stand and be good in making points. He also shared poems from the Book of Odes. Book 10 Confucius talked with different people and ruler with a rightful manner which shows a symbol of the ruler authority. He acted with his attitude and his appearance. He shows himself with the proper gentleman gesture. Many of the passages deal directly with the gentleman's conduct at court or other public settings, involving politics or aristocracy. Also, it presented the conduct of a gentleman in ritual matters like what a gentleman should and should not do in every situation. When presenting official gifts, his expression was genial, and at the exchange of private gifts, his manner was even more relaxed. The gentleman wore garments depending on weather, days, or ritual times. He had no objection to polished rice or meat or fish finely cut up, but he is thundered from how it was presented or cooked. He had self-norm for how to take foods and drink wine. Confucius politely acknowledges receipts of the gift, but does not, contrary to custom, taste it, being uncertain of its properties. To make certain it was safe to eat before sharing it with others. He asked questions about everything when entered the Grand Temple. He handles funeral proceedings. He bases his attitude and manner depending on the state of person he may see. The rest of the book continues in this manner, touching upon various instances of proper etiquette. Book 11 The Master differentiates the older and younger people on how they handle rites and music. He said, older people are rustics and younger people are true gentlemen, but in usage, the Master follows the older ones. He brought conversations about the disciples and gave insights with many events that were shared together. It is obvious that Confucius had strong feelings and bonds with them. Several passages seem to cover the period of mourning Confucius was in following Yan Yuan or Yan Hui's untimely demise, and some reveals disagreements and tension between Confucius and other disciples. Also, it shed some light on how Confucius dealt with his disciples. He explained the question of Ran Yu or Ran Chu and Gong Shi Hua and gave different answers that are about hearing something as well as putting it into action. Some were mentioned a mild criticism of the disciple Silu, perhaps made in jest. Confucius then goes on to give a more serious evaluation of Zilu's level of attainment. Both Zilu and Ran Chu were in service to the Ji family. Confucius hints at the Ji family's possible designs for usurpation. B was one of the areas under the control of the Ji family. Confucius considered Zigao too young for such an appointment, particularly one associated with the Ji family. Confucius, while loving a zealous outspoken manner, at the same time disparages the excessively modest language in which the other two express their ambitions. Book 12 The Master answered each of his disciples' questions. 
first is about humaneness. The master said, it goes with mastering the self and return to ritual. Maybe, behavior that you do not want others do to you, then do not do to others. Or being cautious, or by showing love and understand others. Another is about gentleman. He answered that it is the one who has no worries and no fears, brings out what is most admirable in people, he does not bring out what is bad in them. The petty man does the opposite. Next is about clear-sightedness. The master said, It is someone who is unmoved by insidious slander or hurtful and persistent accusations. And about government. It is having enough food, enough weaponry, and the trust of the common people. He added, Let the ruler be a ruler, the subject a subject, the father a father the sun a sun while you engaged in it never be negligent act in accordance with loyalty to govern is to put to rights and about how to deal with friends he answered advise them in a loyal manner lead them with goodness but if you get nowhere then stop no use to bring shame on yourself Zilda asked about government. The master said, Do it by leading and by rewarding. Then Zonggang asked about government too. The master said, Your first concern should be the officer in your employ. Excuse minor shortcomings and promote those outstanding talents. In the other place, when master and Fanchi started a conversation where Fanchi wants to study how to grow green, the master replied, in that line, I'd be less used to you than an old farmer. Fanchi then wanted to study how to, grow, how to grow vegetables. The master replied, in that line, I'd less used to you than an old vegetable farmer. Then Fanchi left. In the other day, master went away with Ranyu after the carriage driver. The master said, a sizable population. Then Ranyu replied, once you have such sizable population, what should you do next? The master said, make them rich, and once they reach, said Ranyu, instruct them, said master. In the other place in the court, Master Ran was very late. The master asked, why are you, why are you so late? Then Master Ran replied, there was government business. Then the master said, routine matters. Duke King asked his, their one word that can bring prosperity to the domain, then master replied, words alone can undo that, to be a ruler is difficult, to be a minister is not easy. In Jufu, where Zisha becomes the sea words, in there he asked about government. The master said, don't try to hurry things, don't go to petty gain. Try to hurry and you accomplish nothing. Go after petty gain and the big undertakings won't succeed. Then Fanchi asked about humanness. The master said, Be courteous in handling affairs, respectful in dealing with others, and loyal. And Zigong asked, How should one conduct himself in order to be called a man of station? Then master said, Be mindful of anything shameful in your actions. Do nothing to disgrace your ruler's commands. Then you can be called a man of station. And the master added that, the gentleman acts in harmony with others but does not ape them, easy to serve but hard to please, self-possessed but not arrogant. And Zilda asked, how should one conduct himself in order to be called a man of station? The master said, earnest, exacting but also harmonious, that would be qualify you to be called a man of station. Nevertheless, according to Confucius, the government affairs in their days are a peck and bashful people, not even worth sizing up. Xi'an asked, what is shameful? The master said, when a state follows the way, one receives an official stipend. But when a state is without the way, to receive an official stipend is shameful. Nangong Kuo questioned Confucius. After Nangong Kuo had left, the master said, A gentleman should be like this. An upholder of virtues should be like this. 
And he added, if you love people, can you fail to reward them? If you are loyal to them, can you fail to admonish them? Someone asked Zichen. The master said, a generous man. The person asked about Zichi. The master said, that man, that man. The person asked about Guanzong. The master said, he was the one who stripped the leader of the Bo family of Pian. Zilu asked about the complete person. The master said, Zhang Wuzong understanding, Mengong Shuo of freedom from desire, the valor of Zhuangji of Pian, the arts of Frank Yu embellished them through rites and music, and you have what may term the complete person. And he said, But the complete person of our times need not necessarily be like this. Then Kuo Boyu sent a messenger to Confucius. Confucius seated him at his side and questioned him, What does your master do? The messenger replied, My master and divorce to lessen his faults, though he is not yet entirely successful. Conversation of Master Zeng and Confucius Master Zeng said, The gentleman though does not extend beyond the position that he holds. The master said, The way of the gentleman has three characteristics that are still beyond me. The humane are never anxious, the wise never perplexed, the brave never afraid. Zigong said, Master, that is your own way. Zigong was voicing his opinion of others. The master said, How wise he is. I'm afraid I don't have time for that sort of thing. Chunyu said to Confucius, Q, why are you always rushing around? Are you trying to talk yourself into favor? Confucius replied, I would not venture to talk myself into favor. I'm distressed by so much obstinacy. Zigong said, Why do you suppose that no one understands you? The master said, I bear no grudge against heaven. I do not blame others. I study affairs close at hand and try to become adept in higher matters. Perhaps it is heaven that understands me. Zilu stopped for the night at Stone Gate. The gatekeeper said, Where are you from? Zilu said, From the household of Confucius. The gatekeeper said, The one who knows there's nothing that can be done but keeps on trying? Jizang said, The book of documents state that Gao Zong was in his mourning but for three years without speaking. What does this mean? The master said, Why only Gao Zong? The men of ancient times all did this. When the ruler passed away, the officials under him for three years took all their instruction from the prime minister. Zillu asked about the gentleman. The master said, He trains himself to be respectful. Is that all? The master said, He trains himself in order to give ease to others. Is that all? The master said, He trains himself in order to give ease to all men and women. But training himself in order to give ease to all men and women, even the sages Yao and Shun found that hard to do. Yuan Rang sat waiting for Confucius in a solemnly posture. The master said, Young but not proper, you submissive, grown and no one speaks well for you. Old and you still don't die are your pest. A young boy of the village of Yu was assigned to carry messages. Someone asked Confucius about him, saying, Is he improving himself? The master said, I've seen him sit in the seat of, for adults, seen him walk shoulder to shoulder with his elders. He's not trying to improve himself, he's just in the hurry to be treated as a grown up. Dupling of Wei asked Confucius about battle formations. Confucius replied, With regard to sacrificial planners and stands, I have some learning, but I have never studied military affairs. The next day, he left Wei for good. When Confucius was in Chen, he ran out of provisions and his followers were so weak that none of them could stand up. Silo confronted Confucius angrily, saying, Does the gentleman have to put up with such hardships? The master said, The gentleman remains firm in the face of hardships. The petty man, when he encounters hardship, gives way to panic. 
Jizang asked about how to get along in the world. The master said, If your words are loyal and trustworthy, and your actions sincere and respectful, then even in the lands of the man and Mo tribes, you will get along. Zigong asked how to practice humanness. The master said, A craftsman who wants to do his job will must first sharpen his tools. Yan Yuan asked about how to order the state. The master said, Use the Sha calendar, ride the chariots of the Jin, wear the caps of Zhu, and for music the Shao and Wu. Zigong asked, Is there a single word that can guide a person's conduct throughout life? The master said, That would be re the reciprocity, wouldn't it? What you do not want others do to you, do not do to others. He added that a person can enlarge the way, but the way cannot enlarge a person. Humanness is more vital to the people than water or fire. I have seen people die from treading on water or fire, but I have never seen the person who died from treading the path of humanness. The gentleman is firm but not stubbornly unbending. If your way is not the same, you cannot lay plans for one another. With words, is it's not enough if they get the meaning across. Music master Mi Yan called on Confucius. When they reached the step, the master said, Here are the steps. When they reached the seating mats, the master said, Here are the mats. After everyone was seated, the master reported, So and so is over here. So and so is over here. After music master Mi Yan had left, Ji Zhang asked, Is that the way one talks to a music master? The master said, Yes, of course, that's how one assists a music master. Ran Yu and Zilu, two disciples who were in the service of the Ji family, informed Confucius of a plan to attack Zhuan Yu, a small feudal domain within the state of Lu. When the Ji family was about to attack Zhuan Yu, Ran Yu and Zilu called on Confucius and reported that the Chi family was planning to move against Zuan Yu. Ran Yu and Zilu, two disciples who were in the service of Chi family, informed Confucius of a plan to attack Zuan Yu, a small feudal domain within the state of Lu. When the Chi family was about to attack Zuan Yu, Ran Yu and Zilu called on Confucius and reported that the Chi family was planning to move against Zuan Yu. Confucius said, Are you going to make a mistake like this? Rani said, Our Lord wishes to do so, neither of us his servants wish it. Duke Qing of Q had a thousand team of four horses, but the day he died, the common people of Q could think of no bounty to praise him for. Cheng Dang questioned Confucius' son, Fio Boyu, saying, As a son, have you received any special instructions? No, replied Boyu. But once when my father was standing by himself and I hurried across the courtyard, he said, Have you studied the odes? Not yet, I replied. He said, If you don't study the odes, you won't know how to speak properly. So after that, I studied the odes. Another day, when he was standing by himself and I hurried across the courtyard, he said, Have you studied the rites? Not yet, I replied. He said, If you don't study the rites, you won't have any basis to stand on. So after that, I studied the rites. He gave me these two pieces of instruction. Book 17 finds Confucius discussing the need to serve and going to meet other individuals with this as his stated goal. However, there is no indication that any political service took place. Here we can see that there is a direct contrast between Confucius' own ideals and his desire or kill to serve. He seeks to find a way to be political active and relevant yet is unwilling to work with anyone he finds in savory. This places him in a difficult position, as he is unwilling to compromise. It begins with a story that moves Confucius to seek political office. 
After receiving a suckling pig as a gift from Yang Hu, Confucius seek to avoid an audience from this man. Instead, he travels to his home at a time when believes Yang Hu will not be there to thank him for the gift. Regardless, he runs into Yang Hu on the way. Yang Hu possess a question that Confucius asking if one who has such talents as Confucius does but does not serve his country can be called a good man. He reminds Confucius that time is passing quickly. Confucius responds that he will serve. Book 17 contains short anecdotes and saying reflecting on familiar themes such as ritual or the nature or the gentleman Confucius' relationships with the disciple Chai Yu has already been shown and to be rocky. In the book 18 deals largely with the concept of seclusion. Many of the passages deal with the individuals distancing themselves from immoral actions or behaviors. Books opens with Confucius speaking about Chu the last sovereign of the Yin dynasty and how he faced the Lord of Wei to flee and the Lord of Qi to be enslaved and killed Pikan. He adds that the Yin dynasty would have benefited greatly from these three men. In chapter 3 in book 18, Zhong Qing of Qi tells Confucius that he is old and has no use for him. Upon hearing this, Confucius departs from Qi and chapter 4 revisit the story of Confucius' decision to leave Lu. After hearing that, court was not held in Lu for three days because a group of female musicians were sent from Qi. Confucius decided to leave Lu to seek more moral leaders in other lands. In chapter 5, finds Confucius speaking to Chi Yu, the madam of Chu Jie. Chu Jie Yu sings a song that attracts Confucius' attention. He sings, O oh Phoenix, Phoenix, how dwindled in your power as to the past. Reproof is idle. But the future may not yet be reminded. Then these events, great in these days, is the peril of those who fill office. Upon hearing this, Confucius attempts to speak to Shi Yu, but the madam weakens his step and disappears. The Book 19 features saying by his disciples and does not feature Confucius himself. A number of different disciples are quoted in it. Book Chu Xiong and Chu Xia factor most heavily. When Chu Xia asks what it is the Chu Xia teaches them, they tell him that Chu Xia says, Go with those who are proper and keep others at a distance. Chiu Chiang responded that he was taught otherwise and that a gentleman finds room for all. Hun Sen Wu Xiu mentions to some high officers that Chiu Kung is a better man than Confucius was. Upon hearing this, Chiu Kung makes an analogy using the wall around the building as his metaphor. He says that the wall around his building is not very tall short enough for a man to see over and into the house inside. Confucius' house, instead, would have been surrounded by a very high wall and a very high and a very few would have had a chance to get a glimpse of the inside. For this reason, Tio Kung says Sun Sun Wu Xiu's comments can be forgiven. He continues to say that any attempt to disparage Confucius is pointless. He is beyond reproach. 
Chiyongni or Confucius is the sun and moon that cannot be climbed over. If a man should try to cut himself off of them, what harm could do it to the sun and moon? It would only show that he did not know his own measure. Xiu Qin tells Xiu Kung that he is simply being modest and that Xiu Kung was very every bit Confucius superior. Again, Xiu Kung disagrees, warning Xiu Qin to choose his words carefully so as not to seem as a fool. A gentleman, though for a single word he may be set down as a wise, for a single word is set down to a fool, it will not be as hard to equal our master as to climb up on a ladder to the sky. In chapter 1, in the book 20, deals with the succession of power among kings as it is according to heaven. This chapter also praises King Wu for his decisions to rule according to the way. Chapter 2 finds Chu Chiang asking Confucius about what a man must do govern the land. Confucius tells Chu Chiang that he must pay attention to the five lonely things and keep the four ugly things at the distance. Confucius explains that the five lonely things are to be bound to news without extravagance, to get work out of people without arising resentment, to have longings but never be covetous, to be proud but not insolent, and to inspire awe but to never be mean. The four ugly things are explained to be putting men to death without teaching them what is right, expecting the completion of tasks without due warning, to be slow to act in giving orders but to expect punctuality, to hold a grudge against a man after giving him something. The book 20 ends in chapter 3 with a short passage about the gentleman. Confucius states that one who does not understand heaven cannot be a gentleman. One who does not know rights cannot partake in public occasions. And one who does not understand the meaning behind words cannot understand people.